From the point of view of Macs, at least, we're living in a golden period. Thanks for having Silicon. There is a Mac for virtually everybody at every price point. And sitting right at the top of that stack are the MacBook Pros. But is the MacBook Pro really for you? That's what we're going to find out in this video. I'm David, and I'm back with this week's video. And there's one thing I always forget to do, is so I'm going to do it nice and early this week, and that's to ask your help. I'd love to get to at least 1,000 subs by the end of this year. So if you haven't subbed to the channel yet, it would really help me out. And maybe if you're enjoying these videos, drop it a like as well. And there's one other thing that might interest you. Every weekend, every Sunday, I send out a member's newsletter. It's totally free. All you've got to do is go over to my website and leave me your details there. And it will arrive on your inbox on a Sunday lunchtime. All the details will be in the description underneath this video. Right, let's get back to talking about the uh, MacBook Pro, shall we? Our first look at Apple Silicon was in November of 2020, and it went into three Macs at that point, into a 13-inch MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, and a MacBook Air. Wind that on just a few short months later, then we were given the colorful new design of the iMac with M1 inside of it. And then, just towards the end of 2021, nearly a year ago now, they dropped on us the iterations that we've been waiting for of the M1 chip. It was the M1 Max and the M1 Pro going inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Now, at that point, I kind of knew that I was in the market for a Mac. I've been working on my 2015, 27 inch iMac for years and years, about six, seven years at that point. But it was just beginning to slow down, beginning to creak at the seams. The workflow that I was doing had changed and I knew I needed to think seriously about renewing my Mac. For the first time ever, I was thinking about getting a laptop. The MacBook Pro, because of all the great reviews it was getting, really, really appealed to me. But just about as I was going to tick that box and order it, suddenly Apple dropped on us the Mac Studio. And that got me thinking again, should I go for another desk computer with the Studio Display, or should I get the Studio Display and pair it up with the portability, we'll come back to that in a short while, the portability of a MacBook Pro. It was always going to be a 16 inch for me. I wanted the biggest screen that I could, even on a laptop. And once I weighed up all the options, I decided, right, I was going to break with my traditions. And I was indeed going to order the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. I wanted that flexibility to be able to work anywhere. There's one thing that COVID took me, it was that I don't have to be in the same place all the time to work creatively. So the order was placed. And that's when the fun kind of started. So I think of my MacBook Pro more as a desktop Mac that can be moved if I need it. I try and leave it in one place all the time. I try to leave it in the studio as much as I possibly can. There are two reasons why I don't like moving it around that much. Number one is the weight. It's a thick, heavy lad. It really is. It weighs in it just a nudge under five pounds. The moment you put it into your backpack, you know it's in there. It is heavy. Trust me, if you're moving around all day, say in a city or a town, you're going to know that you're carrying that thing behind you. But it's not only the weight, it's also the cost. It feels as if you're carrying the crown jewels with you. It's a pretty stressful experience. You're looking out not to get any bumps, knocks, whatever, because you know you've got potentially a three and a half, four thousand pound laptop sitting in your backpack. It's just too stressful. So I try to leave it in one place as much as possible. And that might be something you want to consider. What kind of work do you do? And can you be stationed with it most of the time? Yeah, it's got the flexibility you can take it with you, but I really think you should view it as this desktop Mac with the added bonus that it can move if you need to. So when these MacBooks landed around about a year ago, of course, the design was all new to us as well. It was a much thicker, squarer, chunkier design, and it works really, really well. I said that these Macs weigh in at just under five pounds, and if it was anything slimmer, it just wouldn't look right. It just wouldn't seem to fit in with the, the nature of the Mac itself. So I really like what they've done with it. And also those design cues carry through into the M2 MacBook Air that I've got, and even talk at the moment of those same squared off designs going through into next year's iPhone 15 Pro. I really like what they've done with it. It looks really good. And the design of the bodywork means that also it's holding up really well from a scratch point of view as well. After six months of daily use, and okay, most of it has been stationary, but nonetheless, there are no marks. There's nothing to age the Mac at all on the outside. It's aging and wearing really, really well. It's just one thing that's a real shame, and it's similar to the back of the studio display and also of the new iMacs, is that there's this lovely debossed MacBook Pro that goes underneath the MacBook, and you just never get to see it. It literally never sees a day of light, which is a real shame because it's a beautiful styling cube. But overall, the design style that Apple are going along with on this current range of MacBook Pros, I really like, and it, more importantly, is wearing ever so well. It's interesting to note that the keyboard on these new MacBook Pros proved that Apple were listening to us. The touch bar had gone. Now, I was never a hater on the touch bar, to be honest with you. I had it on a 15-inch MacBook, and it was fine. But anyway, that's gone now, and we've gone back to the full set of function keys, so it proves that we just can't get rid of our old habits but at least it showed that Apple was listening to us. 
The keyboard is really, really joyful to use. I'm no touch typist, but I float around reasonably quickly with two or three fingers, and it's a good keyboard to use. I've not had any problems with the key sticking. Trackpad remains a class leader. And even though it sits 50 millimeters off the side of your desk, off the top of your desk, the way it's chamfered and beveled at the edges means it's not uncomfortable on the wrist at all. It's just a joy to use the Mac and the keyboard every single day. Apple are never the kind of company to admit that they've made a mistake or to say sorry, but you've only got to look at this MacBook Pro to see that they knew they'd made some mistakes and they listened to us. They got back to listening to their core customer. We got an HDMI port, we got an SD card reader and MagSafe all came back. This Mac is supposed to be for professional use. And once again, it now felt as if it was up to the task. It was living up to its name. I've used it for the last six months and I've not found it wanting performance in any way, shape or form. If there was any clever memory swapping going on in the background, it never became apparent and it's not held me up at all. It's been a real, real beast of a machine to use. So from that point of view, I could not be happier with it. And it suits what I do every day really well. The other bits that you get on the MacBook Pro, well, the camera 1080p, it was okay, but obviously now you can use continuity camera to get around any shortcomings in the camera that's built into the MacBook Pro. The mics have got some noise cancelling on and they don't sound too bad. You can get away with using them. And the speakers though, the six speaker setup on this MacBook Pro is to die for. It is such a good speaker system, it really is. If I'm away from the studio display, I can quite happily listen to content on the inbuilt speakers on here, which also means that you don't need to bother putting any other speakers on your desk. You can save some space, keep your desk looking tidy, and more importantly, save money because these things don't come cheap. But the speakers, honestly, they're really great. As you get closer to ordering your MacBook Pro, there are going to be a couple of options you need to think carefully about before placing your order, and that is unified memory and storage. I'll come on to storage in just a moment, but if we look at the unified memory, think back to the summer when I made a video using the MacBook Air to do some video and audio editing work on, and that's only got eight gigs of unified memory in. I've got 32 gigs on this MacBook Pro, and it's never caused me an issue. I honestly don't think you'd need to spec it up past 32 gigs. I don't know who would need to 64 gigs unless you're into very high-end 8K rendering and video editing. But for most of us, 32 is gonna be more than enough. Now, storage is uh, an area that always causes division. It really is. It causes people to have conversations each way, each side of the fence. Yes, you can buy some very cheap external SSDs and plug them into your Mac, but I didn't want that. I didn't want things trading out the side of the Mac. I just wanted everything to be inside, internal, and working as quick as possible. Now, no matter what port speeds they say you've got, what cable transfer speeds they say you have available to you and how quick those external SSDs are, in my experience, nothing works as quick as lightning fast SSDs that are built into the MacBooks. And I've been absolutely delighted with mine. I've got four terabytes in this one. It's got a beast of amount of storage on it. Obviously, I'm doing a lot of video work now. The beauty of that is that I can work on any of these projects and just leave it on the desktop for the time being while I'm working on it locally. And only after I've finished the project can I then archive it. But I can work locally with SSD speeds that are just blindingly fast. I never have to wait for anything to load in and drop into the timeline. It's just a sheer joy to work with. So storage, that's down to you really. Yes, you can buy cheaper options. There's all this talk of Apple tax on storage. But I think again, when you're buying what is an already expensive machine, it's worth just getting as much storage in it as you can possibly afford. But that brings us around to the big question now. Is the MacBook Pro actually for you? We covered early on in the video about the kind of work that I think this MacBook Pro is aimed at and is best suited for. Think about the portability, think about how much you need to move around with it, but also look at the other options. If we just pick out the 72 MacBook Air, for instance, you can spec up a really good M2 MacBook Air with 24 gigs of unified memory and two terabytes of storage, and it's only gonna, I say only, gonna come in at 2,500 pounds or just a nudge over, which represents fantastic value of money. It's a truly portable machine. If you want to buy a laptop for a genuine laptop, I think you need to look perhaps at specking up an M2 MacBook Air rather than getting a very heavy, very cumbersome, weighty MacBook Pro. There are certain needs for the MacBook Pro, and I would say it is for that heavier end user, but also for somebody that can predominantly leave that machine alone. Honestly, it really is heavy. I keep going back to it, but I want to be honest with you. If you're thinking about trying to get a deal over the holiday season, either go to store, pick one up, hold it and build it for yourself, 
or just take my word. They are heavy machines and there might be something out there that's better suited to you. Apple Silicon has suddenly opened up a whole new world of laptop and desktop computing to us. And it does mean that there's a Mac out there for all pockets, all budgets, all price points, and more importantly, all users. Don't get pulled into the pro fast lane that you've got to buy a MacBook with the word pro on it. Honestly, Apple Silicon has made most of these machines almost to a pro level now. They are that good. Hopefully, this will have helped you make some choices about what MacBook Pro or what Mac you're going to get over the next couple of months. Let me know, though, what you decide to get. I'd love to know if this has helped. Are you still going to go for MacBook Pro? Or maybe, maybe the Mac Studio and its full desktop capability is what you're after. Or you want to go pure laptop and buy a lightweight but ultra super powerful MacBook Air. Let me know in the comments below. It'd be really great for you to get involved. Don't forget, don't forget what I said at the beginning. If you're enjoying these videos, do drop it a like and also sub in the channel. It would really help me out. I want to get those thousand subs by the end of the year. But guys, that's all I've got for you this time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.